Asgard and welcome to episode 17 of our Sky Factory 2.5 modded Minecraft Let's Play series. Uh, if you recall last episode we started dabbling into magic just a little bit and um, since then I've done quite a bit of work. Now I did originally start recording this episode but I had some technical difficulties with the recording about midway through um, the uh, power here flicked off and it I had to go back to a backup and just big mess um, so of course I lost that recording but uh, I'll quickly go over some of the uh, the work that I've done since um, right here I did go ahead and start branching this off I haven't fully fledged out these um, you know these like connecting uh, things for the uh, quadruple helix yet but I'll I'll do that at some point fairly soon and I also opened up the top of this because I think I might just leave it all like one level I think I think it'll just it'll turn out better and I like the way you know it kind of shapes up a little bit more <clears throat> um, but I'll give it some thought and then over here um, since we set up this witchery setup here we've actually had quite a few animals moving in and um, some of those have been these fluid cows so I really quickly um, in the recording I had uh, started setting up the mine factory reloaded rancher and basically I've got this it'll milk any cows that are in the area and then you can see this precision precision sledgehammer to see the area that it will actually work and so if you notice it's uh, you know this full area that I have set up right here and we have, like, this cow is adamantine. This one is enderium, which is really, really nice to have. Um, we've got a molten invar, a constantan, and a mana steel. So I've got just a tesseract here hooked up to the rancher, and it is pumping the enderium, mana steel, adamantine, invar, and constantan into these drums. So, for example, this enderium, if you look um, right here so for example a ingot of this is 144 millibuckets um, so we have 21,000 millibuckets of it right now so basically we won't have to worry too much about enderium we won't have to go through that long process of you know combining the pyrothium and the um, silver and tin and everything um, it'll just be a little bit easier now eventually we'll automate our AE system to do it so that if we need more than what we're milking you know it'll just make them for us but uh, just it kind of saves us on resources and time right now um, over here I've, I've started opening these up these are gonna be our like elevator tubes they probably won't be this big I don't know um, but I kinda want them like glassed and open so uh, I did start, you know, I just kind of opened that up right now. We don't have the stuff just yet to do the elevators. Um, over here, I have started setting, uh, or I finished setting up our cobble works. So basically right here, you notice we have pipes running all through the walls. <laughs> um, this one's just taking cobblestone and pumping it through. And it's going into these compressors and it does have some speed upgrades in it from Ender IO. Um, and if you notice we have the transfer node back there but it's just compressing the cobblestone and then making double and triple and so on um, right now we've got three quintuple compressed so decent ways down the line um, and then right here I just have a smooth stone generator um, set up right right here oh I never put the lava in there. I just moved the stone barrel from over there to here and I guess I never put the lava in there. Let me grab some really really quick. So... Oh, shoot. I'll tell you what. I think those crucibles are still set up up here. Yeah. 
So I'll just grab some of this. It's not really an issue. <clears throat> All right. And then on this side, I have um, a cobblestone, once again, going through the transfer node into pulverizers and sag mills that are making sand and gravel. And then that, in turn, is getting pumped out into furnaces and sag mills to make glass, uh, silicone, flint, and concrete. And then I also have up there, if you notice, I have a trash can that's just accepting sand because when this sag mills um, gravel, it does have a chance to produce sand as a byproduct. So, just got that going through. We don't really need the flint, realistically. But I figured, why not? If you're going to do it, let's do it right. Um, and then right here, I just have an obsidian gin set up that's taking lava from our tanks downstairs. And then on this side, I have... I haven't done this room out or anything, because we've still got some stuff to put in here. But um, we've got a igneous extruder making cobble and going into a sag mill to make sand. And gravel, of course, is the byproduct. And this barrel set up with a void upgrade so that if it does fill up, it'll just void any extra gravel that we get. <clears throat> and then that's going into a pulverizer to make dust. Then that dust is getting put into water to make us clay. So we have quite a bit of clay built up, um, which is kind of nice. We won't have to worry too much about it, like when it comes to making our clay jars and stuff for witchery. And then um, over here, um, you know how we had all those loot bags that were kind of building up in our pipe, in our uh, system here? I went ahead and, well for starters I cleaned up a little bit of this area, but um, I have them extracting all these chests and they're inputting into this, which is set up with a filter to uh, take uncommon loot bags, rare, common, worn out, and the uncommon treasures. And then um, what, what I have this set up for, it's an autonomous activator from thermal expansion. So basically I just have it to sneak right click um, at you know level height and when you sneak right click a loot bag from um, the loot bags mod it'll just dump its uh, contents into a chest. So this is just automatically dumping all the loot bags into this chest and that's getting extracted. Now the Thalmcraft bags when they're used they just throw their inventory all over the ground. So um, I've got this vacuum chest set up just to suck all the items up and uh, put them into this chest and they in turn get extracted. So <clears throat> if you notice we have all kinds of just random junk that's built up. I already grabbed a division sigil out of here, you know. We've got chance cubes. Um, we've got ender lily seeds, which we'll end up using those. Um, later on, we've got a ton of Lexica Batanias, Enchanted uh, Gear. Um, we've actually got some common treasures, which I could set this up to just automatically pump it out. But right now, I'm not too worried about it. Um, just doing it manually, that's not really an issue. Um, let's see, and we've got these. So we'll put these into the Autonomous Activator so you can just kind of see what happens. If you notice, it's just chunking all that stuff out and then of course that's going into here and getting sucked out so that's just an easy way to if you want to automate your bags you know you can do that and uh, not have to not have to mess with manually opening them all the time <clears throat> but um, I decided to this episode kinda switch it up from um, doing more uh, magic stuff because we really need to if we want to progress with um, Thumbcraft and applied energistics I th like the reason one of the reasons I set this up is because if you look at the presses um, right here inscribed engineering of course we can make another one if we have a, already have one you know but it says that we can find them in meteors, which is how it normally works, but there's no meteors here. Um, and the other option, it says, is from loot bags. So, um, you know, I set up the loot bags in case maybe we'll come across a press. But we also 
want to go to the deep dark because there might be meteors in the deep dark. I'm not entirely sure. And if that's not the case, um, maybe in RF Tools world we can find um, a meteor. So we're going to look at those two over the next couple episodes and um, try to get our presses so that we can start applied energistics. And we'll do we'll do a little bit of magic, you know, in between episodes. Um, you know, kind of switch it up between focusing on the applied energistics and deep dark and then, you know, doing a little bit of magic as we go. But another thing that we really want to get this stuff going with um, is Thalmcraft because we're not going to be able to go really, really far into Thalmcraft without finding aura nodes. And if you take a look, there are no aura nodes anywhere out here. Um, I've, you know, looked around everything. So it seems like we're going to have to go to the deep dark for that. Um, or maybe an RF tools dimension. I'm assuming that those will work. You know, let us make a world like normal. But, um, so, the first thing that we're going to work on is, is actually going to the deep dark. So, let me see. I've got most everything that we're going to need for this. Let me just grab a little bit more redstone here. And we should be good to do this now. Actually, I just realized we probably... Eh, I don't care. This should be fine, I think. So we'll just set our enchantment table down right here. I know it's not ideal because this is where we have our uh, animals and stuff, but I think it'll be alright. And so we put that enchantment table down. If we push it over here and was it shift right click with an empty hand... Oh no, with the division sigil, I think. Um, it's too early right now, so we'll give it just a little bit of time. And once that division sigil starts glowing, we'll be able to do the sacrifice. So in the meantime, let's grab a little bit of dirt. I probably should have made like a separate uh, platform for us to use for this. But this will be fine for now. I mean, it's not going to kill our cows, it's just we're going to have to fix the ground a little bit. Like, bring back the grass and everything. Okay, the division sigil started glowing, so we'll go ahead and do the sacrifice now. So if we... Alter, it's too brightly lit. Oh, whoops. So now, let's try this again. And if you notice, it changed over the ground to this, uh, cursed earth. Now, I don't have a shovel right now with silk touch. Um, we'll get into that before too long, but, um, I didn't think about it burning my cows. Well, maybe we can actually just do this for now. Oh, that cow's escaping. It's a big mess. Give me a second while I get this cleaned up really quick, and then I'll be back in just Okay, minutes. I'm back. Um, it pretty much wiped out, you know, all this, the normal cows and pigs and stuff, but I'm not really too worried about them. They'll come back. But we were able to keep all of our, um, our good cows that we had. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I just filled it up with water right now, um, give you an idea. Filled it up with water so that it'll kind of let, kind of give that all time to, uh, burn up. And then, um, once that's done burning, I'll move those cows out temporarily and then, um, you know, move them back once the, uh, car starts all burn up. So, but this way, just in case they do happen to catch on fire, it's just going to immediately put them out. Um, but anyway, so we've got our division sigil now. So what we can do is, there's quite a few things that we can make. The first thing that I want to get, let me actually dump off some of my inventory here. Um, yeah, I'm just going to throw all this stuff in here. For now, 
Chow Kai. And we'll want ourselves some diamonds and some iron. And let's see, we'll also want just a normal crafting table. And we're going to put it kind of away from, you know, everything else. <laughs> we'll stick it over here. And then the last thing... Actually, before we do this, let me see. The Builder's Wand is, I believe, just a stick and an unstable ingot, correct? I just want to double check before I start making it. Okay, yeah. No, it's obsidian and... Okay. <clears throat> um, but we're going to make a builder's wand because, like, I've been having to make diamond wands not super often, but certain buildings that I was doing, I had to make them pretty regularly. Now, they are a little bit more powerful. Like, for example, a diamond wand could do this entire area. Um, in one click, whereas a builder's wand's not going to be quite that power, powerful. But for smaller scale stuff, I'd really like to have a builder's wand. Plus, eventually we can upgrade it to the supers um, builder's wand. So we're just going to do iron divided by diamond using this activated division sigil and get our unstable ingot. Now, when you when you craft with these, you want to be careful. If you notice, the ingot started turning red on me. Um, once you craft it, you only have 10 seconds to use it or it'll explode and kill you. And you'll also lose any of the materials that you were crafting with as well. So, um, definitely something that you want to be careful with. But now, the deep dark portal is the other thing that we want to get. It takes qua uh, four quad... Ugh, sorry. Four quadruple compressed cobblestone a quintuple compressed cobblestone, and then four unstable ingots. So it is kind of expensive on cobblestone, but um, the system that we have set up right now is actually really, really powerful for um, generating quite a bit of cobble and compressing it down for us. Now, it could be faster if you notice that this uh, compressor is not really keeping up as fast as it, you know, it could be doing. Um, but we'll, we might upgrade that later on, but uh, right now it, it suits our needs just fine. So, let's go ahead and set this up for getting our um, unstable ingots. So, whew, here we go. So we want to put these in very 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 quickly and oh we got it if you notice they started flashing that means we just about ran out of time so fun times um, but we got our portal to the deep dark now which is actually kind of exciting we'll get to explore our first like real dimension because the nether doesn't really count <laughs> um, so we'll set that down right there and really quickly I'll show you just in case you're not familiar with it, I'll show you how the Builder's Wand works. So, grab this cobble. So, for example, if I wanted to um, keep building this wall up, I could just use the Builder's Wand. If you notice, it highlights like some white uh, blocks right there. You can just right-click and place like a whole lot of blocks at a time. Now, it's not quite as powerful as the Diamond Wand. <coughs> Like I said, um, actually I don't even think it's as powerful, well, let me see. Yeah, it's about the same strength as the iron wand, but um, but it'll do the trick for right now for smaller scale, you know, building and whatnot, like rooms and stuff. I don't really need a diamond wand for that, so. But all right, so I guess I'm gonna put this division sigil up really, really quickly. Um, if you notice, it has 251 remaining uses. It does, you know, have a durability in that aspect because whenever it uses up all of that, it's just going to go back to, um, I believe it goes back to a standard division sigil. Honestly, I've never totally used one up because it's, it's really, really difficult to do that. But 
But anyway, we'll go ahead and dive on into the deep dark and have a look around. And I'm hoping that we can find some nodes here. That would be nice. So if you notice when you spawn in, you're going to have your portal here. And then it's just surrounded by torches. Now be aware that when you're in the deep dark, um, anytime that you're out of um, a light radius, you are going to start taking damage. <clears throat> so you want to basically keep torches down and whatnot uh, while you're moving through here. And when you spawn in, you're actually going to be up above the actual deep dark. So you're going to have to dig down to find where you can enter into the deep dark. So it's usually a little ways down here. Okay, this should be the roof right in here somewhere because we've hit cobble. There we go. So that is the deep dark. <laughs> Let's dive on in. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it because I know YouTube tends to make videos pretty dark. But if we go down here, um, you know, it's it's actually ground. We've actually come into a... Uh, I wonder why that's lit. Oh, there's a node right there. Okay. But yeah, we've actually come into... Uh, a world that has a that has a ground but if you take a look we have found aura notes there's one there let's see I'm gonna go ahead and mark it as shoot Perdito Ordo okay and looks like we've got another one right here That's air and aqua. Alright. And it looks like we've got another one right here. It looks like another two right here. I'm just going to stick torches by them. That'll be fine for right now. If you notice, the enemies have a lot, uh, a lot more health. I believe they have buffed health in the deep dark, if I recall correctly. And um, then also, there's just an absolute ton of mobs because it's all relatively flat and it's all pitch dark, like all the time. But if we fly out here, um, I don't know how far we'll have to go for this. Oh, here's a one of those drops. If you notice, the mining down here is actually really, really good. There tends to be a lot of ore pretty dense in the deep dark. So it's probably the best place to run your quarries in, um, which we'll get into actually building a quarry down here before too long, just because we can. We don't necessarily need the ore, I don't think. But um, I'm actually looking because there's actually some structures that spawn in the deep dark. Um... I was going to really quickly show you guys one of those. Hmm. Well, let me cut camera and fly around and see if I can find one really, really quick. Okay, here's one of them. Oh, I was starting to take damage from being in the dark. Um, but this is one of the uh, structures added by the deep dark, you know, the extra utilities. And um, if you notice, there's an entrance here on the top. Actually, I believe that's the exit. Or one of the exits, yeah. Here's the entrance. So inside of here, it's just filled with um, all kinds of monsters, and it's kind of like a maze. Yeah. And um, I don't think... Yeah, I don't think we'll have time to check it all out this episode. But I just kind of wanted to show it to you. Um, what I think we'll do is we'll come back maybe for next episode. and Well, maybe not next episode. I'd like to get some new armor before we um, actually start trying to tackle that place. 
just because it tends to be really dense on mobs. And, oh, here's another one of the structures, actually, that are added. Now, this one's just like some crazy bedrock structure, um, and at the top, there's a chest. So, you're meant to actually platform up this, um, but I believe you're meant to platform up it, like a platform challenge, if I recall correctly. Well, maybe not. I thought there was a way to actually platform up it. Maybe not. Maybe just the, the few I ran into. Huh. Because I don't see a way to actually get up there. But anyway, at the top of this, there's always going to be a chest. So we'll go ahead and check that out. So we've got cobblestone. <clears throat> we got some, uh, you know, some diamonds, emeralds. We'll go ahead and grab all that and the moss stone. So just something to kind of keep an eye out for. Um, just these big bedrock structures. So, we'll head on back. Alright. And then, of course, there's these big gaping holes that go down. And at the bottom of the deep dark is actually just the void. So, if you were to go all the way down, um, you know, you just die. So, but um, I believe, I don't think there's any special ores that are only going to be found here. Um, to my knowledge, I think we've got everything that we really need with saving. But I do think we'll set up a quarry. Maybe one of the, um, like, world destroyers or something like that. Um, and we'll just set it up down here to run just for fun um, later on. So, but like I said, next episode, or not, probably not next episode, but uh, fairly soon we will... Um, tackle that dungeons down here. It's just I want to wait till we kind of get some better armor going, which is something that we're going to be working into fairly, fairly soon. So, but at least we've got that so we can get um, nodes for Thomcraft. So I feel like next episode we can start, um, you know, jumping into Thomcraft a bit more. Now I do want to look really, really quickly um, before we end out the episode. I'd like to see if there is meteors in the deep dark. Because if there is, we can get our presses for um, applied energistics. But I'm almost thinking we're going to have to do an RF tools dimension for that. Oh, I forgot to grab the jetpack. All right. So let's see, um, we'll want to make a meteorite compass which, uh, let me find it here, okay, well, it might be easier to just look up compass. So <clears throat> this is the one that we want from Applied Energistics, just like some charged sardis and some iron. So let's grab that really quick. <laughs> I guess that's the first time I've ever picked up charge service. Alright. Oh, I had iron on me. I don't know what I was doing. And that'll get us this. Now, if you notice right now, it's just spinning around in circles. That means there's really no meteors in this dimension. So, that's what we're going to check in the deep dark is to see if it, okay, it's still just spinning around. So that means there's not going to be any meteors in either of these dimensions. So our options are either maybe it'll, one will come from a loot bag, and we just haven't been lucky because, I mean, I ran three chests of those. Um, the only other thing I can think of is maybe we need a legendary loot bag, which are fairly, fairly rare. Um... Or we might go check out an RF Tools dimension. So, um, if you're not familiar with that mod, it's it's pretty much like Mistcraft, um, in that you can kind of create your own worlds and go and visit them. And for all like practical purposes, they're just you know a uh, just a brand new Minecraft world. However, you can do adjustments so that you can make the water say you can make the water all sewage or 
you know, different things like that. So you can kind of set up how the world is going to be um, set up and everything, but, um, you know, I'm thinking we could actually set up a world that we could go to that um, would maybe have the presses. Is kind of my thinking. Now I'm going to switch this out so that it'll be spawning um, Endermen for us. Because having more Ender Pearls is never a bad thing, really. So we'll go ahead and set that up. Do we have any. I'm sure we do in here somewhere. There's one. And we'll just let that run for a while. Maybe we'll get some more loot bags. And uh, maybe we'll find a press. If not, like I said, we will... Um... Oh, you know what? This doesn't have a redstone facade. That's okay. That's okay. I'll just keep an eye on it. Or I'll stick one on there. It doesn't really matter. But, um... But, yeah, so... We'll probably end up checking out that dungeon in the deep dark. I mean, right now I've got diamond gear. We could maybe handle it. I might do that, just to upgrade my sword um, in between this episode and next. And then once we actually clear the dungeon, I'm going to set up a quarry and just have the quarry tear it all down. <laughs> just for fun. But, um, yeah, we might check out that next episode, or we might start, you know, messing with Thalmcraft a bit more. I would like to start getting into that, because um, for the elevator system um, that we're going to have set up here, since we don't have Pneumatocraft, honestly... I mean, we could use the open blocks ones, but they're not my favorite just because they're automatic um, as far as moving. Um, so I don't know if we're going to use that or if we will use the arcane levitators from Thomcraft. But I may use the elevators over here from open blocks and then maybe the arcane levitators in our magic area. I don't know for sure. But anyway, I think I'm going to end the episode there. Um... <clears throat> If you enjoyed it, please comment, like, subscribe, share it with your friends. It's very, very much appreciated. And um, until next episode, I do hope you all take care, and I will see you then.